Okay, so let's look at this quiz question, which was x squared minus 16 over x divided by 5x plus 20 over x minus 4. Okay, so what do we... Oh, it's not showing anything, because <laughs> I don't have it plugged in. That's the reason. Yes, lots in Mr. Heron's class. There are frequent technical difficulties. All right. There it is. All right. So what are we supposed to do in a divide problem? Flip. Flip, and then we'll factor, yeah. So flip the one on the right and change dividing to multiplication, right? Called invert and multiply. you got to flip the one on the right. Change to times then. We've got a factor, right? And you guys know how do you factor x squared minus 16? A plus 4, plus four minus 4. Um, and then how do you factor 5x plus 20? Take out a 5. Then you can cross cancel. Remember cross canceling? So what are you left with? x minus 4 squared on the top because there's two of them over 5 and x. 5x on the bottom. That was answer C. We all good? Easy enough for you? Questions on that one? Looks like a great majority of you got it. That's great. Yeah, that's right. Just Yeah, that's right. The hammer's coming. Starting out easy. So 5 eighths plus 3 eighths. Yeah. That's 8 eighths. Better known as? One. That was a nice one. Test is going to be full of those now, unfortunately. Not. That's just a warm-up. That's not the real ball game. That's just the practice pitcher. The real pitcher is going to throw screwballs and curveballs and change-ups, and we got to be ready. That's just the warm-up. <laughs> All right, so that one is just a nice little... The real pitcher has taken the mound. So there we go. So we're adding two fractions. That's what today is all about. How do you add two fractions with letters everywhere. The main, the main deal with adding two fractions is that the denominators match. Huh. And in this case, this, this again actually is still a pretty easy one. It's going to get tougher than this. The denominators are the same. In a little bit, one or two more problems. And the bottoms will be different. Those will be the real difficult problems. So, so far, those do not get match. Let's say match. Just go ahead and add the tops. Right? It's just like the last one where both denominators had an 8. Down there, we can just add the tops. You've got a common denominator already. x squared minus 8x. So, x squared plus x squared is? 2x squared. Good. It's 2x squared. You just add the, the understood ones in the front. You don't add the powers, right? When do we add powers? When, you're when we're multiplying, but we are adding. Is everybody clear on those rules? That's what gets hard. There's so many rules, huh? You got to keep all the way. Math takes so much practice to get all those rules down. So you want to remember when you're adding letters, you just add the numbers in the front. You don't add the powers. It's when you're multiplying that you add the powers. Right? Good so far? Now, how about 11x and minus 6x? 11 minus 6? 5. Positive 5x. Huh? Good to there? Now, there's one more thing. Can I, like, cancel those x squared? Why not? So what's that? Costco said no. Right? Remember? I hope you remember that. I'm not telling you those cute little stories just to entertain you. Costco says, no, remember, pluses and minuses are glue. They package things. So in other words, that 2x squared plus 5x, he's saying, look, I'm plused, which means I'm glued. It means if you want to buy me, you buy the whole package or you don't touch me. I'm all or nothing. Don't be grabbing part of me. I'm glued, package deal. Remember that? Don't forget that crucial Crucial rule. Pluses and minuses glue things together. Times doesn't glue anything. But pluses and minuses glue things together. All right, so what then? What do we do? We can't, can we cancel these X's? 
No, again, the whole top is glued. You buy the whole top or you buy nothing. And so what do we do? How do we get around the glue problem? Factor. Remember? You factor that top. What, are that, what does that top have in common? X. Right? X times what? And X times what? We'll go back to 2X squared and 5X. 2X plus 5. 2X plus 5. Right? That makes sense? Because X times 2X would be 2X squared, and X times 5 would be 5X, right? We good and happy? And what about the bottom? What do, what do these guys have in common down here? Take out an X. X minus 8, right? Because X times X and X times 8 would go back, wouldn't it? Right? We take out what's in common. Now, why do we do that? Because now, can I cancel those X's? Yeah, because yeah, they're just times. I separated them. They're not glued anymore. They're just times, so we can cancel those. You can buy just one. That's shopping at a normal store, right? So then my answer is just the 2X plus 5 over the X minus 8. We're done. Is that good? Yeah. You could have. Really good question. You could have factored this in the beginning, huh? And that would have been fine as well. Beginning or end. Yeah. Not the top, though. I do, you don't want to factor the tops because you're going to combine that. Yeah, so I know it's confusing. I'm going to write it all out in a minute. When it's really messy, I'll put it in order and I'll say, first factor bottoms, at the end, factor tops. So let me just say it for now. In the beginning, you can factor denominators, but you never factor the tops because you still have to combine the tops. But the bottom, you're not going to combine. It's just going to become whatever it was. Call it denominator, right? But the tops are going to get together, aren't they? So we don't want to factor them until the end. I'll write it all out in a little bit. But for now, you, you wait for the tops. Other questions on that one? They're good. They're going to get harder than this. Those, this was an easy one as well because the bottoms were already the same. Everybody see that? The hard ones, the truly hard ones are when the bottoms are not the same. These bottoms were already the same. They already had common denominators, right? Okay, so we have 12 over 10R plus 11 over 25R. Those bottoms are different. So, we, we must make denoms the same. We must make the denoms the same. Right? You've got to have common denominator to add fractions. So, okay, how am I going to do that? Yeah. So, remember how we learned to find the LCD? Or LCM, what are you going to call it? You do the L box. Remember the L box? And you throw the... T Don't worry about the R. We know... You know, the R and the R, there's just going to be an R. That's no big deal. The letters are easy. It's the numbers, right? So throw the 10 and the 25 in the L box. Remember how to do that? Remember how we did that last week? And then you say, okay, what goes in the 10 and in the 25? Five. five, right? Put a 5 out here. So 5 goes into 10. 2 times 5 goes into 25. 5 times. I divided that in, right? 5 goes into 10, 2 times. 5 goes into 25, into 25, 5 times. And now, what goes into 2 and 5? Nothing, so I'm done. Where's my answer? You multiply these guys together, right? And that's 50. 50 is the common number, common denominator, that 10 and 25 both go into. They both go into 50 evenly, don't they? Now, that means I'm going to make both of these 50R, because the R is there also. You with me? Both those, in fact, let me go back to the original color. Both those denominators are going to become 50R. 50R. By the way, what if, what if one of these was like R cubed and the other was R squared? What, pow, what, what would I use for the common R? Which power? Higher one. You always use the higher one. It's the opposite of back when we were factoring. Factoring, you always use the lowest one, huh? De common denominator, you use the higher one. So if they had like r cubed and r squared, then I would take the r cubed. So my common would be 50 r cubed. Does that make sense? But since they both just have regular r, regular r, then I just use regular r. It's just 50 r. Is that good so far? That's going to be 
the new denominator. How did I find it? I put the 10 and the 25 in the box, found the 50, and brought down the R, 50R. Now, just like this is a new denominator, I have to have a new numerator. How do I do it? Well, you go back here and you do the parentheses, remember? You do top and bottom what they need to become the new one. What does 10R need? What is he missing to become 50R? Yeah, 5 times 10R will make him into 50R. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have no choice but do the same thing to the top because you've got to keep the balance, right? You can't change the fraction. You can only, only change the way it looks. Plastic surgery, I always call it. You're giving it a new, new look, removing the wrinkles, but it's still the same as it was, top and bottom by 5. Good. So 5 times 12, 60. Good so far? Now go to the second fraction and ask yourself, what does he need? What is he missing? What times 25R will be 50R? Two. two. Right? Two times 25 makes 50, huh? Whatever you do to the bottom, you have no choice but to do the same thing to the top so you keep the balance, don't change the fraction. Two times 11? 22. Now we've got two brand new fractions that look different but are not really different and they have common denominators. So we can add them. Do you, see why, do you see why we're doing what we're doing? We had to make the bottoms the same. You can't add them otherwise. So we had to change them without changing them. Right? We had to change the way they look. If I reduced this, just, just hold on for a minute. If I divide the top and bottom by like um, 5, it would go right back, wouldn't it? Or if I took this one and divided the top and bottom by 2, it would be 11, 25. It would go back, wouldn't it? I haven't really changed them. I've just changed the way they look. So they what? So their bottoms match because that's the only way you can add fractions. See how we're always doing that in math? Making things look different so we can do what we need to do? So now add these together. So what happens? You just keep the common. You don't do any, you don't add the bottom. Just keep it, right? Add the top 60 and 22. What's that? 82. Now, can you reduce that fraction in the very end? Yes. 41 over 25 Yeah, divide by 2, top and bottom, be 41. Over 25 R. And we got it. Are we good there? Feel free to copy that down. Questions I can answer? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's where the numbers will come from, and then sometimes there will be letters as well, like if they're different letter patterns. How do you get number by Oh, I just looked at 82 and 50 and said, hey, they're both even. They both end with a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, so 2 goes into both of them. All right. So, here we go. 7 over 9. I'm going to make that x because my z's look like 2's. 1 over 21 x squared. Okay. So, we have to add those two. Hey, guys. Uh, you can tell by my tone I'm going to do something wrong. Can I just go 7 into 21 right now? Just cross cancel. 7 goes into 21 three times. Why not? You don't have a common denominator yet. Not common denominator. That's not the problem. Not the Multiplication. Yeah, if that was times in the middle, I would totally do that. Is everybody getting the difference on the rules? That, this, is what it's got, this is what you have to learn. It takes nothing but raw time and practice. With multiplying, you're allowed to cross-cancel, not with adding. Remember, adding and subtracting is always harder. Pretty much in every setting in algebra, adding and subtracting is always harder. So you can't cross-cancel. You've got to get common denominators. It's ugly on every account. All right, anyway, go ahead and find the common number. Do the box. Do the box, throw the 9 and the 21 in the L box, you know, and give you a second to do that. Find the new common number. Let me give you a second. Work with those around you. Feel free to compare with those around you. Give you a minute on this.
Yeah, so what goes into 9 and 21? 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times. 3 goes into 21 7 times. Right? Remember how that works from last week? Not good. Now, what goes into 3 and 7? Does anything go into 3 and 7? No. No. So we're done. Where's my answer? (coughs) Multiply, multiply, (coughs) multiply, right? 63. Good. So 63. And now... Question? Are you going to take the higher power? Yeah. Exactly. Which you're going to take on the bottom line, right? Right. That's right. So it's going to be 63 x cubed. 63 x cubed. Everybody good? You take the higher one. Remember, we're changing them. We're changing them. Right? We always take the higher power. So they're both x cubed now. Everybody seeing that? They're both going to become 63 x to the third. Make them the same, you always take the higher power. Well, we're going to go back now and change the top and the bottom. So once you get the new common denominator, then you go back, right? Then you go back with the parentheses and go, all right, top and bottom. Oh, I got weird purple color. Anyway, top and bottom, whatever it takes, right? Where is your mystery other X coming from, though? We'll get, we'll get it. Yeah. Everybody see, everybody see the pattern? Everybody see? So I do the box thing. I find the number that's the common denominator, and I make both of them have that number. And then I look at the powers, and I grab the higher one, and they both have that higher one. Right? We are changing the bottom. Make no mistake. I'm not just bringing down the same old bottoms. These are new bottoms, right? That's the whole point. We're making new denominators, common denominators, right? So I didn't just grab this two and bring it down. Two powers. Three. Right? I grab the higher one for both. Yeah. So now we go back and we say, okay, what can I put here? What times 9x cubed will go become 63x cubed? What times 9? You should, if you're rusty, Seven. take 63 and divide it by 9. It'll tell you. Seven. Seven. Seven times 9x cubed becomes 63x cubed. Doesn't it? Basically, notice what I'm doing, guys. And gals, I'm giving it what it's missing. That's the way I'm going to start saying it. I think that'll be helpful. I look at this 9x cubed and say, what are you missing to become 63x cubed? What does he need? What is he missing? He's missing a 7. 7 times 9. 63. Right? You give them what they're missing. In a minute, when I write out the steps, I'm going to write out, you know, find the new common denominators and step 2 going to be go back and give them what they're missing. That's what I mean. What is he missing to become the common? He needs a seven, doesn't he? Now, whatever you do in the bottom, you have no choice but to do the same thing in the top because you've got to keep the balance. You can't change the fraction. Seven times seven? 49. 49. You should calculate it if you're rusty. Good so far. Now, the next one, 21x squared. Include, don't forget, forget about the x. What, not just the number, but also the x power. What is he missing to become the common? He needs a three... You should calculate, if you're not sure, you should calculate it. Divide by 21. It'll tell you, right? Take the 63. Divide by the old one. Divide by the old one. It'll tell you 3. He needs a 3. But that's not all. If you just give him 3, he's missing more than just the 3. 3 times 20 would be 63x squared. He wouldn't quite become the whole con. What else is he missing? An x. He needs 3 and he needs x. And then he'll become the common. So you're building them up to common ground. You're giving them both what they need to become common. Does that make sense? You give them what they're missing. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have no choice but to do the same thing to the top to keep the balance. Is that good? And then 1 times 3x is 3x. Good to there. And now we can add them. Now that we've made them common, we can put them together. That's why we did all that work, so we can add them. What happens on the top? 49 plus 3? 52x. I hope you're looking at that going, no way, Mr. Heron. We're not timesing. 
Careful, it's not multiplied, it's added. So, but, I, but I'm still wrong even when I added them. Why? Why is that wrong? Yeah, it was six. It was six. Oh, is it? What is it? 63. I got 63 down there. They're unlike terms. They can't add. They just stay like that and we're done. They can't come together. If that 49 had an X, then they'd be like terms and I could add it and be 52X, right? But they can't add. They're unlike terms. They're not getting together. Remember, you can only add if they match. Right? How'd you get six at the bottom? Oh, I just messed up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm confusing you unintentionally. There we go. I just meant to confuse you on the top, not the bottom. All right. Yeah, there we go. Thanks. Is that good? Is that better? Is that making sense? We're just done right there. Why? Why couldn't we have the top? Those are unlike terms. A plain old 49 and a 3. If that was 49x and 3x, then we could have them, right? You can only... Are you getting the... I know there's so many rules. Let me lay, let me lay one rule that if you really use that rule, it'll help in a, a lot of situations. Adding, subtracting makes everything hard. Just remember, adding and subtracting is all the hard rules. Multiply and dividing are the easy rules. Multiply and dividing are the easy rules. Let me show you what I mean in a couple of settings here. I cannot add these because they're unlike terms. See how adding's picky? See how adding, subtracting's picky, right? If this was times in the beginning, I could have just cross multiplied, which is quick and easy and nice. But not for adding. No, adding's picky. Don't be cross multiplying, right? You need common denominators, right? Adding and subtracting are always the hard rules, and it's the glue as well. All the hard stuff. James. Yeah, I uh, yeah, well, good question. Hey, guys, how about this? Why didn't I put 7x top and bottom here? Why didn't I put 7x top and bottom here? That would be what? X1, X3, X4. Gotcha. Too much. Right? You only give it what... He's not missing any... He's got all the X's he needs. He's only missing a 7. Not any X's. Good question. Yeah, we're just giving him what they're missing. And that he was only missing the 7, not the X. Good. But what you do to the top, you have to do the bottom. That's right. You've got to keep the balance. can't change anything. Hey, why, how about this question? Why can't I cancel this X's right here? Make that X squared. Shouldn't I do that? No. Why not? Because Costco says no. They're glued. It says 49 plus 3x says, you want to touch me? You buy the whole package. Right? That's what I've told my daughters to say to any young man. You want to touch me? You buy the whole package. And they, and they will. Yeah. Right? Right? That's what I hope all you young ladies are wise enough to say. Right? You want to touch me? You buy the whole package. Right? This is kind of, I'm switching the analogy dramatically, aren't I? Anyway, let's go back to Costco. I don't want to do too many analogies. Right? These are plus together. Right? These are glued. Right? So remember the glue. Forget about the other. There's too many analogies. <laughs> all right. So 49 plus 3x. All right. Good. Let's try another one. All right, so 3, W minus 2 plus 3, W plus 2. All right, so we're adding these. We've got to make the steps. Hey, let me write this. It's a good time at this point to write the steps out because they're getting fairly complex now, and that's a good time for steps. Okay, so um, adding fractions. What are the steps? Step number one, um, find... LCD, you know, common denominator. Um, do the do the box for the numbers. So um, do the box for the numbers, the L box for the numbers, and for letters take high, well, just say highest power. For letters, yeah, <laughs> let me see. So the L box for numbers, letters, highest power. Are we still on the screen? Yeah, okay. Number, number two. So find the LCD. Step two. Multiply top and bottom 
by what is missing. Right, you give them what is missing. Step two. Oh, you know what? I messed up. That's okay, I can squeeze it in. Well, can you squeeze it in? Good thing we got YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, well, I'll just make this step two and step three. There's just one step before. These are right. These steps are good and right, but I'll, I forgot a step one. So step one before them. So make that steps two and three. Step one before that is factor denoms. So factor the denominators. Then step two, find the LCD. Step three, multiply top and bottom. Step four, um, well, here, let me add one more note to, to step three. Multiply out the tops only. Multiply out tops only. Keep denom the same. And finally, step four, try to factor uh, the top and reduce. Here we go. There's the four steps. There it is. That making sense? Let's see it laid out. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So coming to this first one. Here we go. Step one. Factor denominators. Well, most of the time that's not required. There's nothing to factor down there. So we, right, the, the, you know, if this was something like, you know, W squared minus 9 or something, then I would factor the denominator. But it's not required. Often not required. So step one. Done. So I'll just say done. Step two. Find the common denominator. Now, if you have numbers, you do the L box thing. If you have letters, you just take the highest of each. Yeah, now remember, what do pluses and minuses do? Glue things together, right? So when I say numbers, I mean like if there was a number in front, like if there was a, a 2 in front of that. Whoops, I'm getting confused here. If there was a, a 2 in front of that W plus 2, or if there was a 5 in front of that W, if there was some other number in the front, we don't have any. <laughs> We don't have any. My point is we don't have any out front numbers in these denominators, do we? You with me? Am I losing you? Here, there, you, you really want to be clear about the glue thing. That becomes an increasingly important rule. This 2 and this minus 2 are glued to the W, aren't they? Package deal. So in other words, I, don't, I can't take that 2 separately and do an L box with it. It's just glued. So I'm not talking about that too, right? So that's the, so we don't have any any out front numbers in this one. There's not anything like a two in the front or a five in the front. We don't have any out front numbers. I don't have to do any L box. No L box required on this one. All I've got is letter packages, right? All right. So what do you do with letters or letter packages? You take the highest. Well, we, yo, you know what? Um, yeah, I should let. Sorry, that's true, but I think that could be said more clearly. Let me, let me back up and say that a different way. Sorry, Ch changing my mind. Um, for letters, one of each type highest. Is that on the screen? Eh, not really. Letters, one of each type highest. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so for letters, you take one of every type, the highest. So that means in this problem, I'm just going to take a W minus 2 and a W plus 2. Does that make sense? I, I just got the denominators right now. I'll get to the numerator in a minute. What did I do? I just took one of those and one of those. Because they're different. They're different packages. A W minus 2 package is different from, than a W plus 2 package. So when you've got denominators, letters, letter or letter packages in the bottom, 
you take one of each type. So I took a W minus two type, and I took a W plus two type. One of each type. Does that make it sense? If I had out front numbers, like I said, if there was like, if there had been like a, um, like a seven out front here and a four out front there, something, then I would have put them in a box, the four and the seven, and they have to work out the numbers. But I don't have that. Is everybody clear on that? If you have out front numbers, put them in an L box and find your number, your common denominator number. And if you um, just have letter, letters or letter packages, take one of each. So I took a W minus two and a W plus two. Good. Now, that's step two. Check. Step three, multiply top and bottom by what is missing. So I'm going to go top and bottom of this one, top and bottom of that one by what's missing. What, what's missing what? To make it the same as the common. Remember, common is our goal. We're trying to make them common. So I'm going to go to this first denominator and say, hey, denominator, what are you missing to become the same as the common? He needs a W plus 2. He's like, I've only got a W minus 2, so I need, I need you to give me a W plus 2. And what do you do to the bottom? you got to do to the top. No choice. Keep the balance. Is that too scribbled in there? Let me make it a little bigger. Is that good? Top and bottom by W plus 2. See that? Top and bottom by W plus 2. Because that's what he's missing to become the same as the commons. Everybody see this step? So you get the common denominator, one of each type. And then you go back and you give them what they're missing to become the same as the bottom. Go to the next one. So, so what does that do? 3W plus 6. Everybody see that? I multiplied the top. That makes sense. I'm not multiplying the bottom, am I? Does everybody see that? I'm multiplying the top, and I'm not. Why not? Because I'm done with the bottom. I've got a common denominator. I'm not going to touch that anymore. I am done with the denominator. That's making sense. denominator is dead. What about the next one? What does this guy need to become the same as the common? He needs the W minus 2. He's got the plus, but he needs the minus. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have no choice but to do the same thing to the top, and then multiply the top. 3W minus 6. See how I said over here, multiply out the tops only, keep the denominator the same. Multiply the tops only, keep the denominator the same. That good? Why? Again, because I've got com once, once you get common denominator, you never touch the denominator again. Does that make sense? The first two steps are all about the denominator. Everybody notice that? First two steps are factor the denominator and make a common denominator. Denominator, denominator. Steps three and four are about the numerator. Give the top what's missing. Multiply out the top. Right? The first two steps are about the bottoms. We get the denominator common, and then we're done with it. Once we get common denominator, we don't mess with it ever again. But the tops, we're still messing with. So I multiplied the tops. Now I can combine these two, right? Add these two together. Again, I'm not messing with the bottom. That's exact. Once I made common, that's it. The bottom is done. Once you get common denominator, again, you're literally never messing with it again. What do we, but the tops are going to add 3W and 3W. 9W squared. We're adding, not multiplying, right? Adding. 3W and 3W? 6. 6W. And 6 and minus 6? Cancel. Zero. Those are gone. So just 3W and 3W make 6W. And we're done. That's our answer. You don't like it? Hurt your head? You'll get more comfortable as we go. No pain, no gain, right? Even in the mental exercises. We good? With all that? We see what happened? 
So 3w and 3w made 6w. Not w squared, because we're not multiplying. And six, positive 6 and minus 6 is 0. So those are just gone. That's why there's no numbers. And why can't I cancel these w's? The, the bottom is a package. The top is fine. That's, the 6 w is no package. So not, it's not plus or minus. The bottom is like, I'm a package. By the whole w minus 2 or none. Right? Can't take just the W. Right? Getting the hang of those rules? Yeah. Making sense? Yeah. Uh, why not put a square on the W minus 2 and then W times 2? Like, like there's two squares on the top? Oh. So square means there's two of them? Yeah. So there, I don't have two of them. I've only got one W minus 2 and one W plus 2. What about the other one? Oh, yeah. Okay. We never take both. For example, look back. L let me look back. So... Right here, right here. I didn't take 63 and 63, did I? You just take one. See that? You don't take both. So the good, a good question was asked. Why, why aren't I, you know, like, um, over here, let's go back to this problem. Why aren't I taking, like, all of this and all of this and putting them together so it should be 2w minus 2 and 2w minus 2? We're not taking both, we're just taking one is the answer to that. You know what I mean? It's a good question. Right, think about what if I have one third? Wait here, I'm off. Off the screen up there. What if I have, oh, whoop, I can't even, I have no room at all here. Let me go over here. What if I have um, two sevenths and three sevenths? What do I do? Do I take both sevens? No. Five, it's just one seven, huh? We don't take seven to seven, make 14. We're not adding the bottoms. We don't, it's just one, right? Why do we do that? Because that's real life. Real life, take a pie. Cut into seven, piece, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Two, three, four, five, seven even pieces. Well, they don't look too even. But anyway, two sevens. Okay, there's two sevens. Three sevens, right? There's three sevens. How many is that all together? Five fourteenths? No. Five sevens of the pie. It's real life, right? Five sevens. So you don't, you don't do the two bottoms. That wouldn't be true. You just keep the common, right? You just keep one seven and add the top. Because that's real life. The eight, two sevenths of the pie, three sevenths of the pie, eight five sevenths of the pie. Right? Seven is a whole pie. Right. Good? That makes sense. So, what I'm saying is back over here, it's a good question. I'm not really taking these and these, I'm just taking one of them. Because that's what you do with fractions. Because that's what's true. All right. All right. Let's, whoop, not that one, one more here. All right. 6w over w squared minus 16 plus w over w minus 4. Okay. So let's go through those steps. What? Let me remind you of the steps. Step 1. Can you have a question? Yeah. Remember when you're adding, you don't add the powers. That's only multiplying. Right, so if it was 3w times 3w, that'd be 9w squared. But if you're adding things, you can just add the numbers to the front. You don't mess with the powers. Yeah. And you really got to get that rule down. I mean, I know, it's easy to say, hard to do. What it is is time. Go back and do those homeworks again. Those old ones where we added and multiplied. The more you do them, the more you'll know those rules. Yeah, so when you're adding, good question, good question. Why don't, why don't this become w squared? Because adding, we never add powers. It's only multiplying. Good, good question. All right, so how do we add these two now? So what was step number one? Factor denom, huh? Factor denom. So go ahead, factor. One of those denominators needs factoring this time. w squared minus 6. So go ahead and factor that. It's easy for you, huh? I hope it's easy for everybody. That's super valuable if it is, because that's so much of what we do this point forward. If factoring is easy for you, you're in good shape. You have a happy algebra future, probably. If factoring is good for you. Because that's we're doing so much factoring this point forward. So yeah, is that easy for you? Just factor that. I think for most of you it is. Good. So that's step one, factor denom. Step two, find the LCD. Now, 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 what are we doing? In fact, if you want, guys, let's just make one big fraction now. Why make two of them? Once the two denominators are the same, 
We don't need two of them anymore. Let's just skip a step, huh? Just make it one big fraction. When the two are the same, <coughs> put them together, write that. All right, so uh, what's, how, how do we find the common? What's that? Did you put it or no. FL on the bottom? FL? Yeah, that's FL. Right, exactly, good, good, that's FL. That's right, front times front, last times last, exactly. And, and it's 1 plus 1 minus the positive times negative makes negative 16. Yeah, very good. Okay, so what, how do we form the, what's the rule? If you look back, what's the rule for, right here, but no, right there, there. Um, what does that say for LCD? One, type of each One of each type. One of each variety, right? So I'm going to take a W plus 4, a W minus 4, and that's all. I don't need the other one. I've already got one of those. It's only one of each type. I'm not taking two. So the common is just W plus 4, W minus 4. In fact, the first denominator is the common in this case. We'll, we'll get to the other stuff in a minute. But is everybody good with the common denominator? Does everybody see that? Right? You just take one of each type. The common down there is one of each type. Am I losing anybody? Are we okay? This makes sense? Common denominator, you just take one of each type. So I do not take two W minus fours, do I? You go into Target and say, today I'm going to buy one of them. Not two. You're not going to take two of any. Just one of every variety. All right. That's step two. So one of each type for the LCD. All right. Step three is... Give them what they're missing, huh? Top and bottom. So remember, you go back to the previous line and you say, hey, what are you boys missing to become the same as the common? Right? The common includes everything, doesn't it? So you go back to the first one. You say, all right, to the top. first denominator. You here. What are you missing to be the same as the common? No. Nothing. It's got everything. It doesn't need anything. It already is the common. Great. Then don't do anything in the top either. Just bring the 6W straight down. No messing around. Does that make sense? That first denominator didn't need anything. It wasn't missing anything. It already had the whole common. So you don't do anything to the bottom. You don't do anything to the top. Just bring down the 6W unchanged. The top does not change because the bottom didn't change. Right? Top and bottom still the same as they were. How about the second denominator? What are you missing to be the same as the whole common? He needs the W plus 4, doesn't he? And, and same thing top and bottom to keep the balance. See how he's now the same as the common? See how we've made these the same by filling in what they were missing? That's basically what we're doing. We're just filling in what they're missing until they all become the same. Right? See how the bottom now is W minus 4, W plus 4, just like that. And then on the top, I actually multiply, don't I? W squared. But I don't multiply the bottom. I'm not going to foil out the bottom. Why not? Because it's done. Because it's done. Well said. As soon as you get the common denominator, hands off the bottom. We're never touching the bottom again. As soon as we get common denominator. But the top, we've still got some work to do up there. We're in fact, we're shifting our focus to the top now, huh? Once you get common denominator set, you're, you're done with the bottom. You're not, you're not touching it, you're not multiplying it, you're not factoring it, you're not doing anything. All your work goes to the top. You multiply the top, gather like terms in the top, try to factor the top. It's all about the top. So we start with the bottom, get that common denominator, then we go to the top. Now, what else can we do on the top now? So step four is the top. Yeah, 6W and 4. So keep the W squared, and 6W and 4W is 10W. Is that good? Just add a 6 and 4. And it's not W squared, is it? Because when you add, you don't add powers. You just add the numbers in the front. The bottom, of course, hasn't changed, never will. Does it matter where you want the W to? Or W squared? Well, it's good to put it in the front. It doesn't really. It's technically okay to put it in the back. Now, questions to that point. What happened to the six? Six and four made. Yeah. Uh, good. I just combined like terms. Six W and four W made ten W. And not W squared, 
because I'm just adding the numbers in the front. Yeah, right here. Yeah, this is W1. W times W, W times 4. W squared plus 4 W. Does everybody see that? So right here, yeah, just about. I mean, technically, yes. I want to explain why we don't do more. So, so this W goes boom, boom, to be W squared plus 4W. But this guy doesn't multiply anything because look what's out here. Nothing. Why? Why is there nothing? Because the bottom was missing nothing. Remember? Remember how we thought. We looked at the bottom and we compared. And we said, what's it missing? What is he missing compared to nothing? He's got everything. Whereas he was missing the W plus 4. So I did top and bottom. And then multiply. Make sense? But the first one was missing nothing. So I do nothing to the top. Good. Is everybody getting that? Does that make sense? And now, if you look back, I said try to factor the top. In fact, I'll go back real quick. See right here? Try to factor the top and reduce. So... Should I try to factor the top? Yeah, really no is the right answer. Why? Yeah, let me explain why. You could take a W out, couldn't you? You could, but would anything reduce? No, then skip it. Does that make sense? Let me hold on there and make sure you make sense. I don't want you to be confused on a multiple choice exam whenever. When is it? A couple weeks away? What's today? 20th? 13th. It's 13th, right? 20th. I'm getting 20th. Behind, behind the times. So 20th. Yeah, 20th. Anyway, exams in two weeks. Two weeks from today. Anyway, I don't want you to be confused about this. I don't want you to look at that and then they have this and you know you think it's wrong or grab the none of the above or something crazy like that. Why don't I factor out that W at the end? Can, can you factor out them? Yes, you can, but it's of no benefit, so we don't do it. What do I mean no benefit? Nothing cancels. If you look back what I wrote, I said try to factor and reduce. If it doesn't make something cancel, then who cares? Just leave it W squared plus 10W. Even though it could factor, who cares? We only, we only do it if it makes it simpler, if it makes something reduce, cancel. Right? right? If you look back, that's what I wrote. I said try to factor and reduce the top. It's only beneficial if it makes something reduce. So I just leave it W squared plus 10W. That's my final answer. Yeah? So Right. I won't have both. No. Okay, but if you have the top one, the top Yeah, they're both the same. They're both right. Yeah, just I don't want you to get this answer and think that it's not simplified or something because it's not factored. It is good because it, oh, we don't care about factoring because it doesn't reduce. All right. Okay, so 6 over y minus 8 plus 45 over y minus 8 squared. All right, remember the steps. Step number 1, factor D. Now, notice how we start with the bottoms, don't we? All of our work in the beginning is the bottoms until we have common denominators at the bottom. Step 1, factor the D noms. Does anything need to be factored down there? No. There's nothing to factor. Skip it. Step two. LCD. So go go to the one big bar step. It's time for one common. You don't need two of them. Once you make the bottoms common, if they're common, they're same, why why have two of them? What's the common denominator? So remember what we learned, LCD. One of each type, highest one. 
Remember when I wrote that? I said, you take one of each type. You're going to take a y minus 8, and that's all you're going to take because that's the only type. But which one are you going to take? Which one of those? You're not going to take them both. You're only going to take one of those. Which one? The higher one, the squared. Does that make sense? Everybody see that? You're only taking one of them, but you're taking the higher one, the higher power one. We're not totaling them. We're not saying, oh, two and one more is three. No. We're not totaling. We're only taking one of them, right? Everybody getting that plan? You're shopping at Target, and you're saying, today I'm going to buy one of everything, right? You're shopping for denominators, and you're saying, I'm going to take one of every variety. But when you have the same thing in a couple of spots, how do you know which one to take? The higher one. The higher one. Not both. Only one. The higher one. That's good. It's a common. Now, now, step three. So we're done. Bottom is done. Common denominator is done. We're not touching the bottom for the rest of the problem. Right? Once you've got common denominator, LCD in the bottom, you're done with the bottom. Now all of our attention focuses to the top. Right? So... Question. So, on the Y minus 8 squared, you wouldn't break that into... No, no, we want to keep that power on it. No, we don't want to break that down. So, uh, because it's all about powers in our thinking. So we're using the power to decide which one to grab. If we write two of them, the power's not showing anymore. And we won't know which is the higher. So we need the power to guide us to which is higher. So keep it as it is. All right, so step three. Give them what is missing. Top and bottom, right? So this is the comparison game, like comparing to your neighbors, which, which is not a good thing to do, a waste of your life. If I compared to my neighbors, I would be very sad about my vehicles. My neighbor has such better vehicles than me. I think it's because he has one child and I have five. But uh, I have more cars, <laughs> but they're all junk compared to his. He's got, he's got one of those GT Mustang things that rumbles down the street, and he keeps it with the hood open in the garage. Very cool. I've got... The old family van, 2000, you know, 2003, old, beat up, 200,000 miles, family Sienna van that I never wash, and I eat breakfast in on the way to work, and it's disgusting, and I make the kids go with me every now and then. Come on, let's take my car. Get, no, Dad. Yeah, we're taking my van, kids. And, and, and not only that, my, my now 19-year-old daughter last year drove it out to Reedley College and back. She's taking animal horsey classes out there. Anyway... And um, she's real short, and she couldn't see the van, and so she had a couple of accidents in it, and, and I didn't fix it. I mean, I just left the dents, you know, because it's, it's an old, my old junky car. I just go back and forth to work. Who cares? I'm beyond looking cool. I'm 50 almost. I mean, who cares? But I think my neighbors are a little, neighbors have said a couple things like, you need to park that on the street, Brad? I mean, that's got those dents in the front. And it looks totally white trash. It's just dented front, back, everything. I think the neighbors are a little upset with me, but whatever. Oh, Nothing like my... And then, and then a brand new Ford truck raised up, showed up in my neighborhood. One more. I'm going off in my neighbor. I like him. My neighbor's a great guy. I really enjoy him. Yeah, so brand new Ford truck, you know, I'm like, hey, nice truck, yeah, along with his GT thing, right? And he's like, yeah, that's my son's. His son's not even 16 yet. You know, I'm like, must be nice. My five children have to uh, take the old van and things like that when they want to drive around. Anyway, so comparing to the day, it's right. It's good for me. Good for them. Very good yes. for them. That's not for his son, though. What's that? Not for his son. Maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, all right. So, um, so I'm saying all that not just to tell you to start. To get, we're comparing to the neighbors here, right? That, that's what this is. Comparing to the Joneses, what do they have that I don't have, right? So you're saying, okay, look at this denominator compared to that denominator. What is this denominator missing that the common has? Another Y minus A. Give him what he's missing. Give me the neighbor's car. I'll be happy. One time we were in between houses uh, for six months. We sold a house. Top of the market. It was like 10 years ago when the market was so high. And we had like six months before we bought another house because we went to Kentucky and back. Anyway, but for a while, I had like a hundred and almost 200,000 sitting in the bank. Maybe 150. I can't remember now. I had a big chunk sitting in the bank because I'd sold my house and I hadn't bought a new one yet. And I would see the commercials for like the Lamborghinis and stuff. 
I would joke with my wife. I'd say, honey, I could buy one of those. I could just buy it straight. I mean, the kids would have to live in it. We have no house, but I could buy that car right now. Anyway, so enough car stories. All right, so you give them what they're missing, multiply out the top. Just multiply out the top right there. 6y minus 48. Right? And then, so we're playing the, what do the neighbors have at home? Come to the next one. Look at this denominator. Good, good so far? And, and give him what he's missing. Look at this denominator compared to the common. What is he missing that the common has? Nothing. Right? He's missing nothing. Everybody seeing that? So don't give him anything. Just bring the 45 down, no changes. Everybody see that step? It's the give them what they're missing step. You're making them all have the same. That's, that's the communism philosophy, right? Everybody the same, even distribution, right? So you're making the two denominators the same. Give them what they're missing. Good? And, and, and then step four is just finish the top, right? Just finish up the top. 6y minus 48 plus 45 is minus 3 over y minus 8 squared. There we go. Yeah, none of them are simple. So let's, let's run through it again real quick. So what do we do? First step is we looked at the two denominators. They didn't need to be factored. We said, okay, find the LCD, which is one of each type, but it's the higher one. So I took the square. And then I played to give them what they're missing here. I went up to the first and said, what are you missing that's a common man? You're always comparing to the common man. You're missing another y minus a. Top and bottom, multiply the top. Right? We don't multiply the bottom, bottom stuff. Right? And then the other one, what is the second denominator compared to the common missing number? So I just bring the 45 down, finish the top. Is that okay? Questions on that? So we got x plus 7 over x plus x over x plus 7. Well, it would be so nice if we could cross-cancel, huh? But we can't cross-cancel. Why not? Because we're adding, which makes everything harder. If that was times in the middle, we would just cross-cancel and the answer would be 1, huh? Right? Anyway, adding is harder. Adding is subtracting. Or always harder. All right. Give it a try. Step one, LCD. Or no, factor denominators. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't need to factor anything, huh? Step one, nothing to do. That's why I always forget the step. There's, not, there's no denominators to factor here. Step two, LCD. Okay. One big bar. When you go to LCD, you go to one big bar because they're common. Once they're common, you don't need two of them. So find the common denominator. We have a solo x and an x plus 7 package, right? We have an, uh, an x alone and an x plus 7 package. Those are our two denominators. So what's the common denominator? What do you do? What's the rule for finding the common? One of each type. And if there's a couple of the same thing and there's a higher and a lower, you take the higher. But the main rule is one of each. I'm going to Target, I'm buying one of everything, right? right? That's the main rule. There's two parts to it, but mainly it's take one of every type. One, so I take an X type, solo, alone, X type, and an X plus 7 package. And that's it. I just took one of each. Is that making sense? Yeah, they're always, the denominators are always multiplied. They're always multiplied together in the denominator. That's what we've always done, right? If you look back, all the ones are, mul are multiplied. So you take one of each type and you multiply them together in the denominator. Good there. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me do a what if. What if, whoops, that's not good. What if there had been like an X out there like that? So the first one was just x, and the other one was plain x and x plus 7. What would the common denominator be then? X. Exactly the same. That's still one of each type, right? I would just say, I need a solo x, and I need a solo x. Oh, I've already got it. And an x plus 7 package. One of each, right? doesn't matter if every island target 
has the Nerf football. You're only buying one. Right? Remember, you're at Target, you're just going to buy one. Doesn't matter if they put that thing on every aisle, you're only buying one. Right? You with me on that? It's only one of each type. Now, what if, it, what if it was like X squared there? Again, I'm only going to buy one of those solo Xs. Which one would I buy? The X squared one. Then you would take the higher one. The most expensive one. Most expensive one. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. We're going to buy the highest price one. So if the Nerf football is $1 on this aisle and $2 in that aisle, we're going to buy the $2 one. We're going to buy the nicer one. That's right. Does that make sense? Is that good? Getting the idea on that? You're only buying one of every type, and if there's some re repetition, you buy the higher one. Right? Okay, let's go back the way it was. So I, take, I took one of each type. I took the solo X and the X plus 7 package. Okay, now step three is you play the what do the neighbors have that I don't have game. Give them what they're missing. Give them what they're missing. Right, you go up to there like that. Give that one what they're missing. <coughs> so what's this denominator? What is, the, what is he missing to become the same as the common? He's missing the x plus 7. Give it to him top and bottom. See how this denominator now matches the common? Like if I went down and bought one of them GT Mustangs, then I would match my neighbor. I would be greatly in debt. The kids couldn't go to college, but hey, I'd have the car. Right? Does that make sense on that? You give them what they're missing to make it the same as the neighbor, to make it the same as the common. And the bottom, you don't actually multiply, right? We're done with the bottom. We have the common denominator. But the top, we're going to actually multiply this out, aren't we? Remember? We've got to foil out that top. The bottom we don't. Remember, we got the common on the bottom. We're not touching the bottom for the rest of the problem. But the top we're going to foil out. X squared plus 7X plus 7X plus 49. We good? Two there. Good so far? Go to the second. Compare him to the common. What is he missing to make him the same as the common. Solo X. Give him a solo X, top and bottom. And then he will match the denominator, right? What happens on the top? X times X? X squared. See how, see how this denominator and that denominator are now the same as the common? See how they're exactly the same? We've made them. By giving them what they were missing, we've made them the same as the common, haven't we? Is that good? Give them what they're missing. Finally, step four is just finish up the top, huh? Finish up the top. What needs to be done on the top? Yeah, x squared and x squared. 2x squared, 7x and 7x. 14x plus 49 over x times x plus 7. And, the, and that's it. We, I'm not going to even think about trying to factor that top. No way. That's just it. The top? Top's not factored. That's just it right there. Are we good with that? Questions on that? What, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this line right here. So we're just done right there. Mm -hmm. That's our answer. You might notice... That they, um, they, I think the answer is right here, isn't it? If you can see the A, B, C, D. It's too, it's too messy. You can't even see it, huh? 
Let me, uh, let me go to a fresh screen. You guys got that copy down? Yeah. Are you okay that that's the same? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have, what was our answer again? It was uh, 2x squared plus 14x plus 49 over what? x times x plus 7, right? So everybody, everybody got that copy down, that okay? 2x squared plus 14x plus 49 over x times x plus 7. So, yeah, which one of these answers? Do you see it's the same as C? Uh, yeah, they're using a T. But also, see how they multiplied out the bottom? They just made it x squared plus 7x. That's fine. Either way, it's the same thing. Everybody okay with that? See how that's the same? So on a multiple choice test, it's the same. Grab it. Multiplied out or factored or whatever. It's all the same. Good. Shall we try another? Okay, so number nine. So V minus 5 over V plus 6 plus V plus 2 over V minus 3. Same game. Step one. Factor denoms. Not needed. There's nothing to factor in the bottom. Step two. LCD. One big bar, LCD. What's the LCD? Yeah, just one of each. We're shopping at Target. We're buying one of everything. Good so far? Now, after you get home from shopping at Target, you look over at your neighbors and see what they've got that you don't got. It's a very materialistic problem. Right, so now step three, give them what they're missing. Top and bottom. So look at the first denominator compared to the common denominator. What's the first denominator missing to be the same as the common? What does he need? B minus 3. Is this making sense? And then you've got to multiply that top, don't you? Right? We're done with the bottom. We have common denominator in the bottom. We're done with the bottom. But the top, you've got a foil. Right? The V goes to both, and the minus 3 goes to both. <laughs> so we get V squared minus 5V. Yeah. And minus 3v plus 15. Good. So far. Good for that one? Mm -hmm. Now do the second fraction. Give him what he's missing, top and bottom. So what's the second one missing? V plus 6. Yeah, V plus, you know, compared to the common, he's missing V plus 6. Right? Does that make sense? See how both denominators now match the common? I gave them what they're missing, so they're the same as the common. It's always the name of the game. Make them the same. Make denominators common. So, but you have to multiply the top, right? You have to multiply that top. 
So V goes to both and 2 goes to both. Is that good to there? We good? That's a lot of like terms to gather on the top then, huh? Yep. So step four is just combine all the top. So V squared and V squared. Remember, we're adding now, right? So we're just adding numbers in the front. We're not messing with powers. Yeah, so V squared and V squared is 2V squared, isn't it? Good so far? And minus 5V and minus 3 is minus 8. Plus 6 would be minus 2V. Minus 8 plus 6. Oh, and then this one. Oh, it's just gone. They totally cancel. That's interesting. This is minus 8 and these are plus 8. So the Vs are just dropping out. Because there's exactly positive 8 and then there's exactly minus 8. So here it's minus 5 and minus 3 makes minus 8. And here is plus 6 and plus 2 is plus 8. So minus 8 and plus 8, V, 0. Gone. All the Vs drop out. And lastly, 15 and 12. Is that 27? I have this big old bar. We don't need a big old bar. 15 and 12 is 27. The bottom is V plus 6, V minus 3. And we're done. It's getting more comfortable. Questions on that one? Talk about it. Okay, so if they give you 6 over 5 plus 3 over minus 5, they want you, we're back to some easier, just number. Those are, that, those are just numbers. My 5s look kind of funny. So we're just adding up those. When, when you, do you guys remember that when you have a minus in the bottom of a fraction, you can just move it up to the top? It doesn't matter. It's all the same thing, you know, to be in the bottom or to be... So negative in the denom, just move... Well, negative in the front. Well, no, that's not well said. Negative in the denom, let me just leave it that. Negative in the denom, move to the top. So if you have that... Just move it up there to the top, like that. Is that good? See what I did there? That's still the same thing. It if you just have one negative in a fraction, it doesn't really matter where it's at. Top only, bottom only, it doesn't matter. So I move it up to the top, and then I can combine these two because they have a common denominator, don't they? These already have the same denominator. So it's just going to be 5 on the bottom. It's common. So all we do is the top. 6, take away 3. What's three. that? 3. three. We're done. 6 minus 3 is 3 on the top. Why is that a... Oh. <coughs> Yeah, move the negative to the top, and then you've got identical denominators. So then you just, that's just the bottom. Once the bottom is matched, that's the bottom. That's a common denominator. So 6 minus 3 is the 3 at the top, and we're done. Is that good? Makes sense. Okay, do you remember the turnaround rule? 9v plus 1 over v minus 3 plus 5v over 3 minus 3. Basically, right here, when you have, when the, when the letter is subtracted at the back, turn around. and put negative in the front. Remember that rule? We had it last week.
that if you ever have two things subtracted with the letter at the back, we don't want the letter at the back. We're going to turn that around and put a minus in the front. Remember that? Kind of, sort of, vaguely from last week. We're fine with the first one. The first denominator has the letter in the front, so that's fine. We're good with that. So I'm going to turn this one around and put a minus in the front. We good to there so far? Because we want the letter in the front. We always want the letters in the front. We don't want the letters in the back. Okay, I remember that Yeah. Right. We always want the letters in the front. We don't want them in the back. Really, honestly, it's fine to have them in the back. We just want consistency to make it easier for us. It's really just for us. There's no official math rule. We can't put letters in the back. It's just hard for us to deal with it when some are in the front, some are in the back. So to make it easiest for us, just always put the letters in the front. So if they're in the back, just flip it around. But when you do, you have to also put that minus in the front. Everybody see that? I can't just flip it and do nothing. That would be illegal. That was the rule from last week, remember? That if you have two things subtracted, but think about numbers. I mean, I mean, I want to make sure that's really clear in your mind, not just something Mr. Heron says. Think about, like, what if you had 7 minus 3? Is that the same thing as 3 minus 7? Can I just flip it around and go, oh, it's all the same, doesn't matter. No, that's, that's now negative 4. But if I also put a minus in the front, now it's negative, negative 4. In other words, it's positive 4, which is what this is. That works. Did you see that? Is that too quick? So that negative sign is actually negative 1 in front of the parenthesis. It is. It's negative 1 in front of the parenthesis. That's exactly what it is. Remember that from last week? So we talked about how if you change the order of subtraction, you really change the sign. 4 becomes negative 4, huh? So you have to put a minus in front. So when you switch the order of subtraction, you, because, and, you, and you do that whenever the letter is at the back, when the letter is at the back, you switch the order and you put a minus in the front. That was from last week. Now... What do we do? Let me erase all this stuff. Now, what do we do with the uh, minus that's in the front? Where does he go? To the top. Remember, because just like the last problem, right? We moved it to the top. We don't want negatives in the bottom like that. That's a pain. We're trying to make the common denominator in the bottom. That good? We good to there? See where that minus went? It went up to the top? So everybody see what I've done so far? When I see a letter subtracted at the back, I turn it around and put a minus to the front, but then I just let that go up to the top. Why? Because I, I, I'm trying to make the bottoms match. I don't want extra minus signs in the bottom, right? Just let them go to the top. Same thing, top, bottom, whatever. Just let it go to the top because we want the bottom clean, right? Well, do the bottoms match? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They've already got a common. So the ones where the bottoms already have common denominator are much easier, aren't they? You don't have to mess around with the LCD and the give them what they're missing, right? If the bottoms already match, then you're good. The bottoms match. You're almost done. Everybody catching that? I know there's so many rules and so much mess it can be confused. Let me see that again clearly. All these problems, it's all about making the bottoms match, isn't it? Common denominator is the name of the game on all these ones. Whatever you add, fraction, or subtract them, you want to make the bottoms the same. The bottoms the same. So, what does it take to make the bottoms the same? Well, in this case, it just took a little turnaround. Float the minus up, and we're there. Normally, it takes a whole bunch of work of factoring and give them what they're missing and all that. Not so much work on this one. Yeah. So nine. Yeah. Now you just finish the top, huh? Once you make the bottoms the same, just finish up. Nine v minus five v is four v, and the plus one, and we're done. Why can't I cancel these v's? Glue, Costco, all or nothing. Buy the whole package or take none of it. We can't buy the whole package. So we're done. Hey, there we go. This unit not eligible for a individual read sale. That's, that's true. Okay, good. That's a V there. All right, let's. 
Okay, I'm going to make that an x. x minus 4 over x squared minus 4 plus 4 minus x over 4 minus x squared. All right. What am I going to do with this right away? Flip it. Flip it. Remember, we never want the x's subtracted at the back. So do that first. Before, we're going to factor in a second. That will, will be our next action after we flip. But yeah, first do the, we want the right order. You know, you don't want letters subtracted at the back. So flip that around, put a minus in the front, and let it float up to the top. Right? Then, yeah, then go about the business of factoring. No, the, yeah, good question. The first one's fine because the X is in the front. We're fine with the X is in the front. And the bottom, you want to flip them? But this other one here, we want to flip this. We don't want that X at the back. We don't like X subtracted. We don't care about the numerators. Oh, I see. Are you about to talk? Yeah. yeah, remember, we don't even think about the numerators till later. Good question, though. Really good question. All of our focus is where? Denominator. I don't care what the X's are doing in the top. I'm not even interested in the top right now. All of my focus is the denominator, making common denominator. That's the name of the game. So yeah, just the bottom. Don't worry about the top. Just the bottom. Oh, there's a trick on this one. Let me help you. Okay, so flip with the minus in the front. Let me do that. Yeah, so what, let me watch, watch out, guys. I, I want to make sure you don't get tricked. So... Okay, good so far. I flipped it with a minus in the front. And where did... That good? And then where does this minus go? Let him go up top, right? When he goes up there, do you realize these are two separate things? If you put a minus 1 up here, what's he going to do? Hit them both. He's got to hit them both. That's the trick. I want to make sure you see that. It's going to be minus 4 plus x. And he's no longer on the bottom. Does everybody see what happened there? Everybody see that? Right? So that minus that was on the bottom, right? The I turned around the bottom, because I don't want x at the back. Minus came out front, and then he went up to the top, and it's really a minus 1. And then he has to multiply both the things. The common mistake is to only put it on the front guy. But that's not right. That minus has to hit the whole. Just like he was, you know, on the bottom, he's got to multiply both it together. Distributed, right? It distributed, right? distributed, yeah, to both the items on the top. Exactly. Is that good? He distributed to both the items on the top. Common, common mistake there is just to put him on the front. But he applies to the whole numerator, not just part of the numerator. When he goes up top, he's going to see everybody. Not just the front guy. Am I good? Now. Yeah, actually, you know, I don't even have to factor because the bottoms already match. The only reason we factor denominators and shop and give them what they're missing, all that is to make the bottoms the same. If they're already the same, great. Let them get together. Yeah. So the bottoms already match, don't they? So I'm not going to shop or factor or give them what they're missing or any of that. I'm just going to combine them. What happens in the top? X and X. 2X. Minus 4 and minus 4. Minus 8. Minus eight. Done. Yep, that's okay too. Yeah. Good, good question. That's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, remember, the order doesn't matter, just the signs in the front matter. So minus a plus 2x, same thing. Yeah. Which is kind of confusing because it's just got to tell you that the order didn't matter when you're adding them. Well, it's just helpful to us when we're trying to get common denominator. It doesn't technically matter ever in math. It's just easier for us when we're, when we're doing common denominator in the beginning. But at the end, who cares? Makes sense on that? That good. Everybody see what happened there. So I turned around that denominator. The minus came out front, flowed to the top, hit a mode, and then the bottom matched. Remember the whole game. The, the main. I know there's so many particular rules.
But always keep the main rule in your mind. Denominators the same. So at any point where you've made denominators the same, boom, close the gap, done. Right? Don't, don't get caught up in the, in the trees and miss the forest. The forest is denominators the same. That's what this is all about. Right? So as soon as they match, you're done. Wrap it up. Right? Don't go shopping and comparing. Say, hey, denominators match. Done. That's always the Okay. Okay, we good to there? All right. Where's my focus? Where am I going to look first on this problem? Yeah, it's all about these denominators. Remember, the name of the game is make the denominators the same and then just finish her up. So, the center one's the problem, isn't it? They're almost, they're almost the same, except for that center one. So what do you got to do for that center one? Flip it. Give it a flip and put a minus in the front, but then let that minus trout float up to the top and hit everybody in the top, right? Give you a second to do that. Okay, so we're going to turn around this one. So the middle one gets turned around, and the minus sign, the minus 1, comes up to the top and distributes, doesn't it? Everybody good to there? Everybody see what's happening? Let me circle it. So see how I turned around, and then the minus 1 went up to the top? That's the turnaround rule, right? So I turned around the one when the letter is subtracted at the back. When the letter is subtracted at the back, turn it around and let the minus float up to the top. Okay, now, do the denominators match? Yeah? I've arrived, basically. Right? I'm not going to shop and give them what they're missing. I'm not going to do any of that. That's only for when they don't match. And you have to do all that monkey business, right? Shopping and giving them what they're missing and stuff. These match. The denominators match. So just finish her up. Make it one fraction. No use in keeping it three. They're all the same. Denominator. Well, okay, so what do I do? So I'm done with the bottom, right? I'm never going to touch the bottom again. What do I do with the top? Yeah, just bring, bring it on down. Y plus 7. Now, here the minus has got to distribute. Boom, boom. Minus 6Y plus 1. And here the, that other 6 is going to distribute. Plus, whoops, 6, 7, 7 is 42. 42Y minus 6. Make good to there. Right, and then what's everybody good? Everybody see what I did? I just made them into one. As soon as the bottoms match, you can put them together. That's the name of the game: is making the denominators match, and just put them into one fraction, and now combine the stuff. What do we got? Y. This is really one y minus six y plus. Just use your calculator. Just go one minus six plus forty two. What is that? 37? 37y, right? Just do the numbers. Remember, like terms, just the numbers in the front, right? We don't mess with powers or anything. Just do the numbers in the front. And the same thing for the other numbers. 7 plus 1 minus 6. 2. 
over y minus 5 done. So I just added the y stuff and I added the number stuff separately. Everybody see that? All right, so 1y minus 6 plus 42 is 37y. And then I did the plain number, 7 plus 1 minus 6. 7 and 1 is 8, minus 6 is 2. And that's our answer. So as soon as the denominators match, just combine the tops, right? Everybody seeing that? Everybody okay with that trickery? Questions I can answer? Okay. So um, now... Yeah. So big, messy, ugly denominators. I want to make them x's. x plus 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1 plus 4 over x, mi four x minus 1 over x plus 1, x minus 1. Plus x minus 2. X minus 1. Is that what that is? I can't read it. Yeah, X minus 1. Over 1 minus X. X plus 1. Okay. Okay, we good to there so far? Well, I just wrote it down. I haven't done anything, have I? <laughs> there it is. It's written down. All right, so yeah, so what... Who, look at the, now remember with the big picture. Big picture is what? Denominators the same. I've got to make the denominators the same. They almost are. Who's the only trouble child up there that's not falling in line? This one right here. Yeah. You just got to give that baby a flip. Right? He's just got the X subtracted at the back. So he just needs a flip. Doesn't he? He just needs a flip. So just give him a flip. And what? You can't just flip. Something else always has to happen. A minus one has to go but float up to the top, right? Minus one has to go up there. You with me? That makes sense? Whenever you give a flip like that, turnaround rule it's called, when you turn around, something subtracted, a, a minus one floats to the top. Now the bottoms all match, don't they? So what do, we, what do we do as soon as the bottoms all match? Go shopping? Find LCDs? Go to our neighbors and what's missing? No, we don't mess with any of that. That's only work we do to make the bottoms match. But once the bottoms match, what do we do? Combine the tops, we're done. The three bottoms are all the same, right? No. Just the order. Order doesn't matter. Okay. Right? These, these are the same two things. Same two things. Yeah, order doesn't matter. Yeah. They have the same. They both, all three denominators have an x plus one and an x minus one in some order. Oh, I see. I'm just That good? So as soon as the bottoms match, you just combine the tops and you're done. All that other shopping and neighbors and comparing stuff, that was when the, neighbor, the bottoms didn't match. Okay, so put them all together. One big common denominator, x plus 1, x minus 1. <clears throat> but this is going to be a lot of work in the top here, isn't it? you got to multiply everything out, right? See what I did? When we combine the tops, we got to multiply everything out, right? I did 4x minus 4. Everybody good there? Can you just the last one? What's up? The last one. Yeah, let's do it. What I would do, guys, to make this one easier, is I would leave the minus one sitting there for a minute and just distribute this. I'm going to do it right here. What do you get? X squared minus X, and the minus two goes minus two X plus two. Negative two times negative one. And then the minus one has been sitting patiently, waiting his turn, sitting in the front. And then... The minus 1 
will go right on through. So let me let me do that. I'm gonna let that minus one go. Boom, 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 boom. This is a tough one. So we'll get minus x squared plus x plus 2x minus 2. Look at that big mess. Yeah. All right, let me slow down a little bit. Do you see what happened there with all that foiling and multiplying? So I, I turned around this denominator and put a minus 1 on the top. But then to multiply all this stuff out, I had to just let the minus 1 sit. Just pretend it's not even there. Foil x minus 2 with x minus 1. That's x squared minus x minus 2x plus 2, right? And then let the minus 1 have his multiply turn. He multiplies everybody, changing all the signs. Does that make sense? See how he, the green is the changed signs from the blue? And finally, now combine the like terms in the top, right? So, what we do in the top? What's, what's first? What's the first like term in the top? Minus x squared. He's the only, he's the, we go from highest power to lowest, right? Minus x squared is first. Right there. And now, how about the x's? Just use your calculator. Add the numbers in the front. It's 1x, 4x, we go 1 plus 4 plus another 1x plus another 2x. 1 plus 4 is 5, so yeah, 8, huh? Plus 8x, everybody getting that? Just use your calculator. Just add the numbers in the front of the x's. And then the plain numbers. Just minus 4, huh? Still on the screen? Yeah. Man, that was a long one. We got it. Is that good? Say that one more time. Why? Wait, wait, say that again. There's a plus two. Right, and then there's a minus four. So that so what is two minus four? So that's negative two. Negative two. Two dollar loss and another two dollar loss is a four dollar loss. Two dollar loss is a four dollar loss. Why is it another two dollar loss is a four dollar loss? Or you could just say plus two and minus two cancel. And it's just minus four. Right? Just use your calculator for those numbers, mm -hmm. if you're getting confused on those. And we're done. All right, one more. Questions on that one? Yeah. You can do that on the YouTube and watch it as slow as you want and listen again and again and again. Share it with your friends. No copyright, no charge. Just enjoy it. All right, let's try. We got one more of these. 3 minus x over 36 minus x squared plus x plus 6 over x minus 6. All right. Let's see you guys do the whole thing yourself straight on through. You can do it. I bet. I bet a lot of you can. None of the above. <laughs> if in doubt, guess none of the above. No, no. Ah, so it's one of the above, yeah. one of the below. What's the first thing we're going to do on this one? Well, we have X subtracted at the back. Yeah. So you know what to do with that. X subtracted at the back. That guy's saying, turn me around. Right? We don't want X subtracted at the back. Right? Turn me around. Give him a flip. And what will happen when you flip him? 
blah, 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 blah. sound effects and everything, right? What'll happen? What's my blah, 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 blah? What is that? The negative floats to the top, right? So flip that denominator, and a negative one floats to the top, and it's going to distribute to everything I'm sorry. in the top. Question. Yeah, and the x squared was negative, and now what's in front of him is nothing but plus. It's both sides changed, huh? That's why we need the minus in the front. Because otherwise we change things. I'm glad you're seeing that. That's exactly why. Now, I couldn't just turn it and not put a new minus sign there. Because I changed it, haven't I? That's why the extra minus sign is there to fix the changes we made. You're exactly right. We are changing the sign. That's why that extra minus sign suddenly shows up and says, hey, I'm here, you just changed something. I'm here to fix that change. You can't be changing it. You have to. Because you change signs. That's right. You're seeing the truth. That's exactly so it. Good. Good observation. So that's why that minus shows up and then floats to the top. I mean, you could leave it on the bottom, but we don't want messes on the bottom. So we float to the top. So 36 is the same Yeah, we're done with the bottom. Well, yeah, we just turn it around. On the bottom, yeah. So we just, sort of, we just grab this and flip the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Just turn around that bottom. The minus flows to the top and distributes. Is that good? Okay. And then what do you got to do? What do you got to do with this denominator? X squared minus 36. Factored. He needs to be factored, huh? That denominator needs to be factored. It's an FL, huh? X minus 8, X plus 6. So factor that denominator. I'll let you do that. Give you another minute there. Factor that denominator. Distribute in the top. Okay, so um, on the bottom there, that's going to become, the top will distribute, so minus 3 plus x. On the bottom, it's x plus 6, x minus 6. Everybody okay there so far? So I factor that bottom. Remember, the first step is factor denoms. So really, we're doing stuff before the first step. But remember, we factor the denom there. Everybody good with that? And what's next? Yeah, find the LCD, right? One big fraction, LCD. Go shopping. Go shopping for the LCD. One of each, huh? One of each. It's just going to be... Uh, is there such a thing? Okay. So, uh, yeah, is everybody good with that being the uh, common denominator there? We good with that? Is that making sense? So I turn around this denominator because you never have x subtracted to that. Minus comes out, goes to the top, distributes, minus 3 plus x. The bottom factor, x plus 6, x minus 6. Common denominator, you go shopping, right? And you, you say on the first aisle, I'm going to take one of everything. Second aisle, already got an x minus 6. Don't need another one. You're buying one of everything. So there's the common denominator, x plus 6, x minus 6. You just need one fraction now. You don't need two because they're common, right? As soon as you've got that common denominator locked in, you're done with the bottom, and you don't need two fractions. You just got one. All right? If but you, have to add with the other one, you got to compare to your neighbors. When you get home from shopping at Target, you look over at your neighbors. This is really not what you want to do with life, but... Um, it works for math. So you look at your neighbors and you say, he's still got that fancy car that I don't have. He's got that Maserati. I need that Maserati. When your neighbors have Maserati, wow. That'd be real fancy. He's got a Mustang GT thing. 
All right, so um, compare to your neighbors. What is he missing that the common has? Nothing. The first one has it all. He's a neighbor that has it all, right? So, so just bring, so negative 3 plus x. No change to the first denominator. Just bring this one over unchanged. Does that make sense? Because the denominator didn't need to be changed. Remember that? Remember this whole shopping, give them what they're missing compared to your neighbors? All right, how about the second one? What is the second one missing that the common has? X plus 6. Right? See how, see how this common now is, that number is the same as the common? See how I made this the same? And then the top needs to be multiplied. Not the bottom. We're done with the bottom, right? Top needs to be multiplied. X squared, 6X, boom, boom. 6X, 36 still on the screen? Oh, just barely off, huh? Tried to squeeze it in there. Good? Getting the hang of all these steps? Last step, combine the top. How does the top combine? So x squared goes first. X, that's 1X and 6X and 6X. That's 13X, isn't it? Plus 33, because 36 minus 3. There it is. What do you think about all that? Can you do that? We did the whole section. So all those will be due on Wednesday, that whole section. We just did them all. So use this YouTube to help you out, right, if you're stuck in the homework. Just one section. Yeah, because it's a big, bad section, so there's just one of them. Yeah, so only six, five, or six, four? No, it's six, four. Please, please. Six, four is due on Wednesday. We did them all. So use the YouTube to help you if you get stuck on that.